Hello and welcome to video 9 and today we will talk about delay systems. So I'm here in VS Code, I will load uh, the control system package and the plotting package and then I will create a simple uh, transfer function model corresponding to our nominal system without the delay. So in this case it's just a, a first order system. Uh, to add a delay to this model, we introduce uh, a variable tau that corresponds to our time delay, one second. And then we use the constructor called delay. So if we just create the delay, we see uh, it's represented as a delay LTI system. And it has some matrices inside there and there is a, a vector of delay uh, parameters. And currently there is only one. So if we multiply that uh, from the right to P, we add a delay on the input. Uh, had we uh, placed the delay to the left of P instead, uh, we would have added a delay on the output instead. So now we have our first order system with an input delay and we call it PD. So when we have such a system, we can use it as just an ordinary system. So we can, for instance, plot the body plot we see it's our first order system, but the phase here, it, uh, the phase drops dramatically here. We see it's 5,000 degrees negative phase. And that's indeed due to the time delay. We can plot the Nyquist plot and we see the characteristic spiral we get from a, a time delay. Uh, we can uh, plot uh, time domain simulations. And for that, it's not enough with a control system base package. We need to load the full control system package. So here I plot the step response and we see that it takes one second here before anything happens. Otherwise it behaves just like a first order system. All right, uh, so a lot of functions that we are used to uh, uh, when we work with uh, linear control systems, they don't work for uh, delay systems. Uh, uh, but we can very often approximate uh, the delay as either as a rational function that's called, uh, usually we uh, you make use of a per day approximation. We can also uh, approximate or we can discretize the system uh, to get the discrete time system because um, if we choose the uh, sample time for the discrete time system appropriately, uh, we can represent uh, the delay system more or less exactly uh, as a discrete time system. Uh, but first we show we can approximate the delay system uh, with a per day approximation of order 3. And we can compare the delay system with a per day approximation. And we see that the uh, magnitude curve is identical. Uh, but the phase curve is only valid for low frequencies. And then if we go higher up in frequency, we see that the per day approximation doesn't really hold up. If we would increase the approximation order here to maybe order 6, See now maybe we are accurate a bit higher up in frequency before we had this plot. If I toggle between them, we see that we're accurate a bit further, but um, still not very far. Um, to discretize the system instead, we call the function c to d and then we provide a um, sample time here. So this must be, there must be an integer number of sample times uh, that goes into the delay. Uh, and if there are more than one delay in the system, that must hold for all the delays. So the delay here is uh, one. So if I sample that uh, with a sample time of uh, 0.01, we have uh, exactly 100 samples per delay. And that is fine. So if I plot that also, now we see that once again, the magnitude curve looks uh, more or less identical. But now also the phase curve here in green, it's hard to distinguish them, but the green and the blue curve, they are more or less exactly overlapping. So this is a good approximation. If we look at the discrete time system here now, we see that this system will be quite large. Uh, and that's because we require a lot of states uh, to represent this uh, delay. Um, we see that it has 101 states. If we had approximated this with the sample rate of point uh, one instead, we would have had 11 uh, states. And then we would not be uh, accurate as far up in frequencies. Uh, remember that uh, we cannot uh, make use of the discrete time system higher up than a Nyquist frequency. And already 
when we get close to the Nyquist frequency, we can't really uh, trust the system model in discrete time anymore. So that's a, obviously a trade-off. All right, so what else can we do with the delay systems? Uh, we can design controllers for them. And one particularly interesting controller for a delay system is called a Smith predictor. And we can show uh, how that is built up in this block diagram. So here we have the plant model, the system we are uh, interested in, in um, controlling. So we have a nominal model P and that has a delay uh, added to that. And the Laplace transform for a delay is e to the negative s. There should be a tau here perhaps. All right. And the controller here is some uh, controller C0 with an internal feedback loop here. So all, all these three blocks are part of the controller. And this internal feedback loop, it has a model of the, the nominal system here, I should call that P, uh, to correspond to the code. So it has a model of the nominal system and then it has this uh, weird uh, one minus the time delay here. So if our internal model of the system is exactly accurate, then there is one part in the internal model that exactly cancels the real result here. And then uh, this controller will only control um, the nominal plant without the time delay. Uh, but in practice, there will be a slight mismatch. So there will be a contributing effect also from uh, the real feedback from the uh, measurement here. But the particularly attractive uh, thing about the Smith predictor is that you can design your controller for the nominal plant model without the delay uh, and it will still work fairly well. So here we will design a simple uh, PI controller using pole placements. I choose uh, closed loop bandwidth of two radians per second and uh, relative damping. And I call the place PI function to, to get a PI controller. All right, it looks like that. I can then uh, form two closed loop transfer functions. So uh, feedback, if I call feedback like this, where I place both uh, the controller and the uh, plant in the forward path, this will be the transfer function from reference R to output uh, y. And the other transfer function where I only have the plant in the forward path, uh, that's the transfer function from a disturbance appearing at the input to the plant uh, to the output. So we can form that transfer function and then we're going to simulate. And here I call lsim with a, with a function as the second argument. And this is a function of state and time, but we don't bother about the state in this case we just want the function of time. So the first input corresponding to the reference, it will just be one. So that's a step response appearing uh, immediately at t equals zero. But the second input, uh, which is the input load disturbance, that's a step appearing at time 15. All right, so when we simulate and plot that, let's see what happens. We see that the controller goes unstable. And the problem here is, of course, that we designed our pole placement controller assuming that we just had P without the time delay. Uh, but now we will instead form this Smith predictor here and see if, if that controller works better. So we see that the Smith predictor is a feedback interconnection where we have C0 in the forward path and we have uh, 1 minus the time delay here times P. Um, in the feedback path. We form that controller, then we form the uh, same two closed loop transfer functions and simulate. And this time we see that the system behaves much nicer. We see that we have, we are supposed to have a step at the reference at t equal zero, uh, but obviously it takes one second before anything happens, so we still have the time delay, uh, but it behaves reasonably well. And when we get the disturbance here at t equal 15, uh, we see that it takes a while for the controller to uh, respond, uh, but after that it managed to, to drive the disturbance down back down to zero. All right, so this was a very brief tutorial on how to use 
uh, delay systems in the toolbox. And if we go to the documentation of the package, there is a page called Properties of Delay Systems. Uh, you can read a bit more about perhaps weird and unintuitive things that can happen when you use uh, delay systems. So we can get, we get these spirals in the Nyquist plot, we might get these waves in the Bode plot, and we might get this jagged kind of responses when we do uh, time domain simulations. There is also a page on creating systems uh, that also has some illustrations on how we create time delay systems. All right, that's it for today. Thank you.